Hello my friends and welcome to episode 58, I was going to say 38 there for some reason, uh, of The Wanderer. I'm not going to have a highlight reel because we've got so much to cover, I'm going to try and get through all this quickly. So, first game since the last episode we played Dundee, we won 3 out. it was a poor first half, we kicked it on in the second. Scott McKellar getting a game as well, getting a 6.4 rating for the young man, uh, fairly happy with that. But then, played Dortmund in a friendly, I'm not going to go into that, and then we played Aberdeen. We lost 3-1 to Z Gomez on the score sheet for us, Stevie May, Scott McKenna and a Jack Henry on goal, giving the Don a 3-1 win. But I just want to have a quick look at the match stats here. This is absolutely insane. When we have a look at the match stats, 20 shots to their 7, 9 to their 3 on target, 8 off target to their 4, obviously not really great, 2 clear cut chances to their 1, 4 half chances to their 3. How we lost this game, I will never ever know. And that was with some big, big saves from Freddie Woodman. Also in uh, transfer news, we have brought in Neil Sullivan as a goalkeeping coach, the former Leeds and Crystal Palace goalkeeping coach. Was recommended to me by one of my co coaching team. And basically, I just looked at his goalkeeping stats and he was absolutely phenomenal. Was willing to accept 1.6k a week, which was a slight rise on Paul Gallagher, who has made way... But as you see, apart from it in shot stopping, he's a big, big upgrade. Um, 15 shot stopping to Paul Gallagher's 16, so not really a downgrade there. And if we have a look at training and coaches, he's not even covering shot stopping. We've put that to Edward Daninsky, who is 13. In fact, I'm just going to swap those around. Um, but three star isn't actually any change. But we can now get up to four star on every single goalkeeping thing with Neil Sullivan if need be when the time comes that we can get another goalkeeping coach. Um, I'm going to focus on the fitness coach first because I think we're good enough there. Um, <clears throat> that's the only other changes to talk about. Finances, I said I would cover, so 25.7 million in the bank, over 27 million in the last episode which I mentioned, didn't think it would be at that but unfortunately the financials had came down since then. Uh, 4 million, 4.9 million of our transfer budget remaining for January transfers. I've been begging the board for a few things, but it's not worked out. Danny Rogers is out with a sports hernia for four or five weeks. He's out for this game and the next game, which is now going to be mixed episode because of so many things. I'm struggling to get so many episodes recorded, so I'm having to go back down to one game per episode. I hope you understand that, guys, but I'd rather be giving you content, and I've not been able to do that recently. So... I'm going to select my team and I'm going to meet you pitch side in just a second. And we are back my friends. I put out probably the strongest team we had available to us. Freddie Woodman in goal, Tavetanov, Patev, Henry, Markel. Mark Noel taking the ball in a midfielder role in the absence of Grant Yellen who got injured on national duty. And uh, Jovic. Jovic. Can't even remember his name right now. And Baronas. In, in a deep-line playmaker role again because Jovic is injured. Oh, when I say Jovic, you know who I'm meaning because I'm forgetting his name. Um, Abramovich was very close to getting an odd for there, but I thought we are going to go with Baronis. Uh, Caviglia, Crawford, Smith getting an odd over Jamie Walker, who's just returning, and Zach Rudden, and Z Gomez up top on his own as normal. He's triggered his first goal bonus of the season. However, he's not really done anything fantastic yet this season compared to last season uh, we're going to set off auto instructions or get the opposition instructions done uh, Harry Cochran being left out he's not fit he's recovering from an injury and he's 85% fitness uh, if that Jamie Walker is getting back to match fitness but it's his match fitness that's the issue and I felt I needed to rest and we've got the cup game coming up next weekend it's really not ideal so I'm going to encourage an Helmer to Odegaard. Torreira, ah, oh, it's a great challenge from Baronis, but it's been picked up. And Odegaard to Torreira, is that been touched wide? No, it was just naturally wide. We've gave a bit of encouragement here. Uh, they've lost a player. That is Martin Odegaard they've got in as well. Bit of a wonder kid, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure if he's still a wonder kid this year, but certainly in past years. And I guess he would still probably be in the wonder kid category. It's for him, Callum Smith. 
he's launched that one oh it's poor though he had three men on the run and he sort of hit the middle ground between all three of them Voland he's gone round to Vetinov but Patev away only as far as Hector Martin Odegaard it's over the top of the far post we picked up a, t a point so far we drew 0-0 against Monaco and we lost to Liverpool of course in the Champions League uh, I'll go through the league in the next episode with you but it's looking very very interesting that defeat to Aberdeen took us from 1st to 5th that's how tight it is at the top and we're only a point ahead of 6 as well very very tight at the top is Tvetanov launches clear Caviglia is not going to get anywhere near that Pavard uh, Odegaard oh Hector's managed to get a bit of space and he's found his man at off the post I thought it was a great save from Freddie Woodman but it was off the post Zee Gomez holds up well and it's in behind for Callum Smith I've not been convinced with him in these positions yet but it's a decent ball across for Caviglia he's tall in air but not tall enough to beat Hector only as far as to Vetinov though those six shots all off target though eh, keeping us in the game we have the only shot on target so far Caviglia to Ali Crawford can we have another one here oh it's inches wide it fell to Jamie Baronis maybe not quite the man you ought to fall to in that position he's not the best finisher I mean he scored a couple of big goals for us in the past but they all tend to be absolute wonder strikes as Ruben Diaz just getting ahead of Zee Gomez who's could have chased down Timo Horn there, but he's not done it. It's launched across to the other side to that guy. Forward for Pitanga. He's got the better of Jack Henry, and it's in for Kevin Volland. I think that's our first shot on target in the fifth 46 minute. But it's been a deserved goal, to be fair. He got mano mano with uh, Tvetanov, who's not the guy you want to be defending in the air really he's not the tallest not the best jumper can't really blame him I think it was Jack Henry that let him go and Patev stepped forward to leave it to Tvetanov um, I'm going to go with the unlucky boys because I think that's the right option here um, is they've got another that lad they've just brought up Brought, it's either brought on or brought off I didn't see which way it, around it was uh, always get muddled up with those as Odegaard's stepping in the box can't be getting that much space oh and it's Mark Noble's clearance it falls straight to Patenga apparently um, I'm not sure how this is a Kevin Volland assist I'd be very curious to see how this is a Kevin Volland assist so Odegaard comes across Noble how is this can someone explain to me how this is a Kevin Bond assist? I mean, I'm not complaining. It's a goal regardless. But Odegaard's here. Mark Noble clicks, kicks the ball. Uh, where is Bond? Here. So Noble click, hit, kicks it off Odegaard. And it falls for Patenga, who's here, who scores. Fair enough. But apparently it's a Kevin Bond assist. I think that might be a bug. Um any way we can change this really I mean we're away from home Patev clears Caviglia clears it means we do have two home games to go but one of them is against Liverpool of course Z Gomez oh that's poor from the Portuguese man I think our change is now being sealed as Feridun is coming on as uh, Volland again strikes just wide <sighs> he's a dangerous player Kevin Volland Torreira to Odegaard He's been absolutely tearing us a new one a little bit. Tactics, let's go into opposition instructions, see what the assistant says. That's a lot of changes, but we'll go with it. Helmer. Oh, he's played it to Odegaard, who's just got a touch on it. I don't think it was actually meant for him, but it's worked out so well for Bayer Leverkusen. But Freddie Woodman equal to that very tame shot from Helmer. And he launches forward. Callum Smith brings it down well. As he got support he does he gets it to Jamie Baronis Ali Crawford and he's found Feridun in a little bit of space and our little Turk has got us back on level terms no he's not we're 2-1 down <laughs> I forgot about the second goal ah that's embarrassing either way Ali Crawford with another big big assist as Torreira launches that one forward he's going to find Martin Odegaard He's got him behind Markel. He's flicked on to Sani. And somehow that's ended up in Freddie Woodman's hands. I'm not complaining. 
We're still in this game as our English keeper is equal to it. Feridun wins that header to Cami Smith. Plays it to Jamie Baronis. Caviglia. Baronis again. Back to Caviglia, but they freed up a bit of space. That's in for the back post. It's actually a very poor cross from our Italian. Was aiming at the back post. But Cami Smith was further away from that than just about anyone on the pitch. Ali Crawford, that's a poor ball up top this time. Bouncing forward for Leverkusen again. I feel like we've been a bit unlucky with these bounces, but we cannot be hitting the ball against people at two yards away. Tavetanov launches that one away, and Feridun's got the pace. Can he get there? He can indeed. Can our tar oh, he can hit the target. He had a man coming in at the far post as well. We're going to bring on Jamie Walker, get him some game time. He's on the bench in place of, what's his name, um, Danny Rogers, just because Danny Rogers was obviously injured. They've t picked up a couple injuries, which is kind of helping for us. Uh, we're going to bring on Abramovich, get him some game time in that deep line playmaker role. I think he's going to be absolutely outstanding once he gets used to it. Baronis is developing in there, but Abramovich obviously had that uh, injury issue at the start of the season, just starting to get into the team. Uh, Jamie Walker not paying attention. It's where that match sharpness really does come into play. Played across to Sani. He's going past people for fun here, Sani. Really got to be doing better than that. And Woodman saves, but goes out for a corner. Interesting animation there. Can we get a counter-attack from this corner, maybe? Crawford heads away to Caviglia. Caviglia's got Feridun ahead of him, but Feridun's not really on his bike yet. Now he is, but Caviglia's not seen him, and that's a really god-awful cross. But we have pressure to keep on, he's rushed the clearance, but he does indeed find Sani, and he's going to go around to Vetanov. Ah, he did indeed. It's a poor ball in, but it crashes the crossbar and comes out. Mark Howell picks up on the far side. You know, I feel like we're not out of this game, and I'm going to go with a gamble. Uh, I don't. Yeah, let's have a look at this. We'll hit that and see if we can do anything. Um, and we're going to bring you further forward. You further forward. You'll prefer that as well. Got no more subs left, of course. We're going to go overload, take more risks, uh, pump the ball forward. Uh, more direct, let's go route one, pass into space, keep looking for the overlap, prevent shorter distribution, close down at all times, higher up, and confirm, and then pause here, and there should be a take more risk shout, uh, maybe not, but we're going to push forward instead then, see it on the tips. Uh, the take more risks shout does this and I've not seen it I really haven't seen it there's no take more risks there um, so I'm going to assume that it's just a tactical thing Is that's going to be a red card Mark Noble our big man p match player is off and I'm now having to play Ali Crawford as a ball winning midfielder as our only option uh, we took more risks Apparently, didn't see any highlights from it, but that was the only risk we've seen. The only risk we didn't want to see is Palacios has it. Pavard, Palacios, Voland, played it across to Sani. He's going to dance past a couple of them and it cleared away by Patev, but only first Palacios cleared away by Henry. Can we get anyone on the ball? That's all we need. Just get someone on the ball, get a counter attack, get a goal. But they're just keeping the ball from us now, Leverkusen. It's going to be full time. I mean, every bounce has fallen for them. And it's been a bit unlucky, I think. Anyway, guys. I'm going to end the episode here. We're going to come back right for the next game for that semi-final of the Betfred Cup against Rangers in the next episode. I'll hopefully catch you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit like, hit subscribe. And hopefully catch you all next time.